Plus, as I'm sure you're aware, we're uh, considering a matter of public importance, the 30th anniversary of the decriminalisation of homosexuality. Um, I call the member for Sydney. Thank you, Mr Acting Speaker, and I join you in welcoming uh, uh, Michael and, and Mitchell to the House, and I'd like to thank um, the member for Marrickville for introducing this matter of public importance and for her long-standing commitment to, to the LGBTI community and, indeed, to her husband's long-standing commitment to the LGBTI community. Um, Thirty years ago this month, legislation was introduced in New South Wales that removed the act of consensual homosexual sex from criminal law. Tonight I speak about how those shameful laws impacted on gay men, lesbians and on bisexual, transgender and intersex people and of how far we have come thanks to the hard work and dedication of community activists and their allies in this place. Criminalisation of homosexual sex was an appalling moral reproach to law that protected no one and harmed many. It institutionalised homophobia, discrimination, violence and abuse. Even after criminalisation was removed, endemic homophobia and violence continued for over a decade with many gay bashings, hate crimes and murders occurring in Sydney in the 1980s and 90s. Gay bashings and hate crimes coincided with a history of discriminatory policing, including entrapment, abuse and victimisation of crime victims, brutality, cover-ups and inadequate uh, resourcing. The first Mardi Gras was a gay and lesbian rights activist protest held on the 24th of June 1978. While protest organisers got police permission, this was later revoked. And police broke up the march and arrested participants. Those who were there, the 78ers, tell me of the shocking police brutality that left permanent psychological scars and added to a long-term mistrust of police. Some of this remains, despite the reforms that have seen massive improvements in police and LGBTI relations. The names of those arrested at the first Mardi Gras were published in the Sydney Morning Herald, outing people and having a major impact on their personal and professional lives, something that publication should apologise for. Criminalisation meant many homosexual men were imprisoned and received criminal records. The public exposure caused many to lose their jobs, careers, homes and families, with lasting repercussions for all their lives. Gay men coming out and pushing for reform did this at considerable personal risk, with sex between men considered sexual assault and punishable for 14 years. State-sanctioned homophobia meant LGBTI people were actively oppressed and humiliated by social and cultural organisations and institutions. Education, health services and workplaces were not safe places to be openly gay or different. While the experience for many transgender, intersex and bisexual people are not simply a result of homophobia, many were labelled and mistreated in similar ways. There is a long history of diagnosis of homosexuality as a mental illness and social deviance, of harmful treatments, isolation and segregation policies, and, de and denigrating concept concepts of homosexuality that have resulted in serious and enduring health and mental health impacts. A history of discrimination and forcing many people to live in the closet had appalling impacts on, the health and, on their health and well-being. Liberal MP John Dowd tried to introduce dec a decriminalisation bill in 1978 but it did not get through the party room. And how proud would Liberal John Down be to know that the, the Liberal member for Coogee will soon introduce legislation to expunge the criminal records of, of gay men charged during that time. Labour MP George Patterson tried in 1981, but the debate was prevented by the then Speaker. He introduced the bill as a private member's bill, but it was defeated. After a number of failed attempts, then Premier Rann introduced decriminalisation as a private member's bill in 1984, and it passed, putting New South Wales on the path to further reform and to acceptance and inclusion. At the time of decrim decriminalisation had already occurred in the Australian Capital Territory, South Australia, Victoria and the Northern Territories. Reformist MPs like Jan Burnwoods continued to push for equal age of consent as the 1984 bill included a higher age of sex between same-sex partners. It was only in 2003 that a Carr government bill achieved this. We have come a long way since the removal of discrimination in de facto couple laws, including workers' compensation, superannuation and taxation, and a state-based register to protect same-sex relationships. Uh, uh, Mr Acting Speaker, I ask for an extension of time. Uh, is... Uh, sorry? A House concurrence, yes. Thank you, Member for, Thank member you. for Sydney. Uh, Clover Moore's homosexual anti-vilification bill made it illegal to incite hatred of lesbians and gay men and empowered the Anti-Discrimination Board to investigate complaints. Her same-sex adoption bill allows same-sex couples to adopt their children as a couple, protecting families. 
there has been significant progress in health, welfare and policing policy and programs to address homophobia. We have come this far thanks to the courageous campaigns by, by LGBTI people and their activist allies who lobbied and protected for law reform and equality. These groups include CAMP, the Campaign Against Moral Persecution, um, uh, uh, Lesbian and Gay Solidarity, the, homo the Homosexual Law Reform Coalition, the, and of course the Gay and Lesbian Rights Lobby, as well as ACON, ACT UP and the AIDS Committee. I pay special tribute to Lex Watson, who passed away and whose life will be celebrated in a service in this parliament this Friday. For 40 years, Lex championed LGBTI law reform, health and welfare advocacy. Campaigns for acceptance and inclusion, equal treatment under the law and removal of discrimination continue. Loving and committed same-sex and gender diverse couples are still unable to marry in Australia, despite widespread community support for marriage equality. We need to remove sanctioned discrimination in all areas of the law, particularly in service provision and employment and education, disability care and aged care. Transgender, intersex and sex and gender diverse people still face legal and social discrimination and I'm committed to fighting this. In some parts of the world, of course, gay men and lesbians still have no rights and live in constant threat of violence and imprisonment. I acknowledge the Australian activists advocating for change across the globe. The removal of provocation defence for, for gay panic murders is another recent reform that sends a message that homosexual lives are equal to others. The House will soon consider a bill, a private member's bill, from the member for Coogee, Bruce Notley Smith, to expunge criminal convictions held by gay men for having engaged in consensual homosexual sex. This is vital to healing wounds and rising our homophobic past, and I congratulate the member for Coogee for introducing this bill. This House should also apologise to LGBTI communities for our shameful history. I join members of this House and, and in the upper and in the lower house and the upper house, the, the LGBTI community is grateful to have so many strong advocates and I would also like to include the Honourable Penny Sharp, the Honourable Helen Westwood and of course uh, the Honourable Trevor Card for their support and indeed many of the Greens MPs, all of the Greens MPs including Maureen Faruqi who holds that portfolio and of course um, Bruce Notley Smith and, and Carmel Tebbett who introduced this motion of, of public importance. I join members of this House in acknowledging our history of homophobia, transphobia and discrimination and confirming our commitment to work with LGBTI communities and advocates to move towards a future of equal treatment, inclusion and opportunity.